a uh, good evening and a warm welcome to today's multiple myeloma uh, awareness meeting facebook like i'm dr kausa from medical affairs oncology team dr reddies to speak about this multiple myeloma i have with uh, i have dr sachin jada with us he is a very well known uh, clinical hematologist and a bone marrow transplant expert with more than a decade experience and he's from hcg hospital bangalore uh welcome sir uh, to uh, spend your valuable time with us we are very honored sir so can you tell us what is uh, multiple myeloma sir multiple myeloma is a type of blood cancer and uh, there are several different types of blood cancer you know probably over 100 and uh, amongst one of these is multiple myeloma amongst the white cells uh, which are there in our body the wbcs the white blood cells one of the cells is called as a plasma cell now if a plasma cell becomes cancerous and it multiplies unnecessarily then it starts damaging the body that disease is called as multiple myeloma so uh, what causes multiple myelomas that we really don't know uh what we know is uh, it is more common in the elderly more common after 40 50 years of age um there are theories there are theories that uh, you know it could be caused by certain toxins or radiation but truly speaking we don't know so how common is it in india it's pretty common uh, we actually don't have uh, reliable uh, statistics from our country but uh, it's pretty common and at any given point in time i believe uh, um, about um, four to five new myeloma patients are diagnosed per lakh population uh, per month or so uh, so can you tell me what are the different signs and symptom of this multiple myeloma you see uh, myeloma is like other cancers so uh, uh, it starts in the bone marrow now our body has lots of bones and inside these bones is something called as bone marrow this bone marrow is the factory where our blood cells are made and plasma cells live within this factory they live within the bone marrow so they start multiplying there suppose one plasma cell becomes cancerous and then it starts multiplying within the bone marrow it will multiply to a level where it starts damaging the bone so multiple myeloma can present with fractures because the bone is damaged at the same time because the bone is damaged a lot of calcium gets released in the blood this high level of calcium in the blood can cause certain symptoms it can cause dehydration it can cause kidney problems and lastly the multiple myeloma cancer cell it releases some bad proteins in the blood these bad proteins are normal proteins they can go and block up the kidneys and lead to kidney damage and kidney failure so these are the two three ways in which multiple myeloma presents most importantly as the cancer cells divide they pack up the normal bone marrow and because they pack up the normal bone marrow it is not able to manufacture normal red cells so the hemoglobin goes down and in fact majority of myeloma patients actually present with a low hemoglobin so from what i told you there are four common features signs symptoms so low hemoglobin fractures kidney problem yeah and reduced immunity these are some of the common signs so how can we diagnose this multiple myeloma sir nowadays multiple myeloma is being diagnosed on uh, uh, you know health checkups in the past what used to happen is somebody would present with uh, a fractures present at a very late stage or present with a kidney failure uh, at a late stage but nowadays because most of the people are going through annual health checkup the doctor will pick up a low hemoglobin and then evaluate uh, and diagnose ultimately diagnose multiple myeloma 
Uh, so you have told us that bone marrow is mainly affected. So apart from bone marrow, uh, like can you uh, uh, give, tell us in detail like what other organs can be affected? Kidney, kidney, bones, and uh, infections can be there. So patients may present with you know recurrent cough, fever, uh, infections in the lung, bad pneumonia. So these are the other organs which can be affected. So, what are the uh, different treatment options for this multiple myeloma? Um, before we go to treatment options, maybe um, I could tell you about the tests that we do to diagnose yes. and, uh, you know, uh, figure out uh, which patient will be cured and which patient won't. I mean, well, which patient can be managed and which patient can't be managed. Um, we do a bone marrow biopsy. We do a bone marrow examination. Now, in that examination, we count the percentage of plasma cells which are in the marrow. So if the percentage of plasma cells is more than normal, then, uh, uh, you know, that gives leads us to a suspicion of multiple. We also do certain blood tests. And these blood tests tell us if there is any abnormal protein which is called as an M band, right? If there is an M band or an abnormal free light chain, then that gives us a second indication that a patient might be having multiple myeloma. And lastly, we do a, a PET CT of the whole body to see whether there are any bones in the body which are being damaged. So these are the tests that we do to diagnose the disease. There are other tests where we look at the genomics of the cancer cell, the, the mutations in the DNA of the cancer cells by doing a test called FISH, F-I-S-H. This FISH test helps us understand how aggressive is this multiple myeloma. Which patient has a good chance of controlling the disease and in which patient will the cancer come back very so these are the tests. Then we can come to the treatment. When we counsel a patient about the treatment for multiple myeloma, the first thing that we tell, and it sounds very scary, is that multiple myeloma cannot be cured. Right? And uh, by listening to these patients and their relatives break down, they say, oh my God, that means I'm going to die. Then we tell them, no, it can't be cured just like diabetes can't be cured. Blood pressure can't be cured. Diabetes and blood pressure are not going to kill you tomorrow. Yeah, You continue to take medicines and you'll be all right. So the first thing that, uh, one of the first things that we tell the family is, look, this can't be cured, but this can be controlled. And now there are wonderful medicines to control multiple myeloma. Patients regularly live for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is explaining that there are two stages of treatment. There are two things that we need to do. First, we control the cancer with chemotherapy. And once it is controlled, the second stage is doing an autologous stem cell transplant. Right? So myeloma treatment has two stages. First is control the cancer. Second is an autologous stem cell transplant. Of course, the third thing is if a patient has complications of myeloma, so if there is a fracture or if the kidneys are not working properly or the calcium is high, then that complication also has to be treated along with chemotherapy. What is the duration of the treatment sir, which the patient has to take? Typically about four to six months. So how frequent the patient has to follow up? Um, initially, we prefer to admit the patient for a week or so to see how, you know, finish all the tests, start the medicines, ensuring that things are going well. And then we see them in the OPD. We see them once a week and then once in two weeks and then once a month as they get more and more stable. So you have told us there is a good uh, life expectancy with the treatment option. Yeah. So uh, the finally, what would you like to give uh, the message to our public sir, regarding this multiple myeloma? Multiple myeloma is a blood cancer. 
but usually it does not kill patients. You know, it, it, it's like a chronic disease. You keep on treating and patients remain fine. The important thing is uh, not to be scared. Get all the tests done. Get your diagnosis correct. And then start the right treatment. Follow up. And, you know, majority of our patients need a near normal life. So most patients, they usually get scared with the name of cancer and with the yeah. name of the treatment and the side effect. So regarding that, would you like to say something? Sir? Sure. So cancer or most of the cancers that we see today can be managed very, very well. Like I said, I know doctors who have suffered from multiple myeloma. They took the right treatment. They got chemotherapy. They got bone marrow transplantation done. And it's been 10 years, 12 years, they're doing well, right? Of course, some patients may not do well. In some patients, the, the cancer may not respond to treatment. Or it may relapse very quickly, even after treatment. But those numbers are much, much less with today's treatment. Second thing is uh, uh, side effects are very few. There was a time when uh, treatment of multiple myeloma was difficult. Most of the patients were injections, but uh, most of medicines were injections. But today, most of the medicines are tablets, right, with minimum side effects. So there really isn't um, too much to worry about. So we got a question from the public, like, if they, uh, is there any change in the diet sir, the patient has to follow? during this period? Usually not. Um, they can eat a, a near normal diet. Um, we encourage them to have only cooked food um, because uncooked food can lead to infections. So have cooked food. They can have veg, non-veg, hot, spicy, sweet. It doesn't matter as long as it is cooked. There is a question that uh, you, some of the cancers are hereditary. They believe like if a father or mother has the usually the children also have. So is this uh, any hereditary role with this uh, multiple myeloma? Usually not. Thank you.